year, the Res 98, I'm going to talk about five ways that we're killing our own privacy. Sort of an extension of my dot com talk where I talk about how the government's destroying our privacy. Um, and uh, so this is my background. Uh, last year, I quit working for the man and started working for myself. Um, I spent eight years in the Navy. Uh, I was a founding member of, of uh, Church of Wi-Fi in an unallocated space and a father of four. And a husband of seven years, my beautiful wife. Uh, last year, I started a blog called The Assault on Privacy, which documents uh, uh, government assaults on privacy. And um, But I don't update the blog anymore so, because I was just posting links to articles, so I just started a Twitter feed. So AOP blog, AOP blog, just follow it. Um, but basically, you post links to, to Fourth Amendment issues, right to privacy issues, etc. Why you should be skeptical. So a lot of people get up here and tell you why, they, why you should listen to them. And I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't listen to me. Well, because, number one, I'm not a lawyer. I'm going to talk about laws, but I'm not a lawyer. Although maybe lawyers should tell you that you shouldn't listen to them. Um, because you see a lot of 5-4 Supreme Court cases, right? So intelligent people can disagree on what the law really means. Um, my presentation is, is, is influenced by what I believe. So um, there's going to be biases in it. So, I, some of them I'm aware of and some of them I'm not, so it's your responsibility to figure that out. So I'm a political presentation, but just, we're talking about politics here, so we're going to be getting into that a little bit. Don't take my word for it. Go out there and find it and figure out it out yourself. Okay, before I start, uh, before I start talking about why we're responsible, I'm going to talk about a decision that came down. I'm going to talk really fast because i got way too many slides. Talk about a decision that came down to the Supreme Court on Monday in the case of the United States versus Jones. Uh, it was a 9-0 decision, decision, which is awesome. Um, that basically said, the government basically said that the attachment of a GPS device to monitor someone's movements constituted a search, which is really good, which means the Fourth Amendment applies. This is where I say you shouldn't take for granted what people say. If you read the newspaper, it said that they said that the court said that you need a warrant. The decision did not say that you needed a warrant. The decision said you needed a search, which is an important distinction. Um, you can read a quote up there from uh, Justice Sotomayor. She talked about the third party. This is probably the most important Fourth Amendment decision related to technology in decades. So really, you should go read it. That's all. <laughs> These are the five ways that we're responsible for our own privacy uh, being destroyed. Ignorance. There's two types of ignorance. One is intentional. This is the I don't care. I don't really care about that. Um, I don't know. I don't care. I don't care to know. The second is intentional or is innocent ignorance. This is something that you just didn't realize. It's not your fault. You just you, were, you, you didn't know about it. Number two, we're consumers, right? 18 million people follow like celebrities on Twitter because they don't know what they're doing. We 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 hunger for data for for information about people. So so if somebody goes and gets it for us. We're social animals. We have a desire to share information with people. Um, it's convenient. We can make things better, cheaper, and faster by sharing information. So we do it. And then acquiescence, which I'll talk about last, and that's the most dangerous. Okay, I'm riding the March train uh, here the other day, and people people wear their, their passes on their lanyards. And if you if you open the pass, it has a person's name on it in the area like right there. It says passenger name. So this guy's talking on the phone, and I'm only hearing one side of this conversation. But I get the idea from the conversation that he's a minister. So I was like, okay, and I looked at his name. So I was like, okay, let's we'll see, see what I can find out about this guy in like two minutes on the phone. Well, this was him. The guy's name is Eric Holder, which is, he wasn't the Attorney General, but that was his name. And I, 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 I Googled him and I found a picture and I was like, that's him. And his whole biography was on the internet and I found that out in two minutes by looking at his path. So, think about that. So, it's a table, right? This is a table that I wanted to get rid of. So I put it on free cycle. And someone said, hey, we'll, we'll come pick it up. So afterwards, I realized, hmm, did, they really, did I really need to tell them where my address was? So I looked at them because I used my phone to take a picture of it. Even though my GPS is off, the exit data on the thing uh, showed that this table was sitting in my front yard. So this is innocent ignorance. Even though my GPS was off, I didn't realize that my phone was still tagging the exact GPS location of, of the tape of where it took a picture. I mean, think about that. We're consumers, so like we want to know everything. We watch these investigative reports, right? Big, maybe we have a TV show called Big Brother, right? People watch this. 
You know, we want to know about people. We want to see people, you know, doing, you know. We, yeah, I mean, think about all these things. We, we want this stuff, so because we want it, someone's got to go get it for us. The quote from Aristotle basically says, human beings exist because they want, you know, associate with other people. <laughs> go on to uh, Bing. They have a thing called Map Apps. Twitter, this is today, or the last couple days, geo-located geo tweets around the hotel. You can click on them and see who they are, what they're talking about. You guys do those exercise things that like tell you how you, you know, tweet, put it on the internet, where you're, where you're driving your bike or you're, you're jogging. This guy put his, like, um, his job online, and it went on the Google Maps, and you could find out one place was listed as his home, one place was listed as his place of work. I mean, people put this stuff online. I'm not saying you can't. Um, <coughs> so people who ride the Metro here in DC, there's a thing called the Smart Trip card. Records your, uh, every time you go from one place to another. So this guy took all his Smart Trip data and mapped it. So this basically says, these are the stations that he's coming and going to. So obviously Silver Spring is probably where he lives and goes to all these other places, but this data that I mean, it's not publicly available, but if you get your hands on this data, you can learn a lot about something. <laughs> Who's got an easy pass or some other sort of device that, uh, yeah. Who's got, a, who's got a customer, who's got a, a, a loyalty card with a business where like, you give them a card? There's a firefighter in Tuckwell, Washington, who was arrested because uh, his Safeway club card showed that he bought this certain type of fire, fire starter that was used, uh, the same type, same type that was used to start a fire, so he was arrested for it. Turns out that someone else confessed to the crime, and, and turns out that they didn't need a warrant to even get the data because he had willingly turned it over to the Safeway. Who's got a Hilton Honors card? Yeah. Third party doctrine basically says that once you share your information with someone else, you give it to a company or business, you have no expectation of privacy in that information anymore, so the police don't even, typically don't even need a warrant for that information. Easy pass all over the East Coast, fast track, yeah. Quick question you just said. Is it just the information you give when you initially signed up, or is it all your information? Anything they collect. Anything that's collected, typically. They just opened up a new road in Maryland, uh, ICC, Intercounty Connector. Anybody drive one yet? Interconnected connector is easy pass only, right? You have to have an easy pass, and if you don't, they take a picture of your car and they send you send you a ticket or send you a, a bill in the mail, and it's 150 percent of of the of the fee. So they charge you more to not use easy pass. I mean, they're basically forcing you to do. They, you don't have to, but they're forcing you to do it. Uh, GPS providers have sold data to the police, and then they use that data to set up traps. Anybody have one of these? Progressive Snapshot or Allstate DriveWise? You put these things, attach your things in your car, and you can save 30% of your insurance when you get this data, because they're gonna find out you're not an aggressive driver. What are they recording? All sorts of things, accelerations, speeding, the GPS locations, they're recording everything you're doing, right? Do you, is, it, is it worth it? Acquiescence, acquiescence is the most important one because this is where we know about something and we still don't care about it. So like the, the, scan, the naked scanner, there's the court said, so far said, okay, it's constitutional. So we say, oh, okay, it's constitutional, I'll do it. Acquiescence, the way to fight it is to say, just because it's constitutional doesn't mean we should fight against it. We saw Senator Rand Paul um, went through the machine um, this past weekend and it, it hit on him and he said, and they wouldn't give up a pat down. He's like, no. I'm not getting the pat down. And they, they eventually they escorted him out of the airport. And people were saying, well, he needs to be treated like everyone else. Well, of course he was treated like everyone else. They didn't let him fly, they kicked him out. But he's making, he, it wasn't, the scene was not about him. He's making a stand, he's making a you know, stand about what's going on. So, uh, the Metro here in DC started random bag searches. I mean, random bag searches. You don't have to be a suspect, they're just gonna search your bag. Anybody hear about Viper teams? So the DHS and the these things called Viper teams, they go around and they like random inspections. Now they're doing it on interstate highways, random stops on highways, no suspicion. How much time do I have? Okay. How 
How about all this? How about all this surveillance around? Um, a lot of a lot of uh, communities install these red light speed cameras. So you know, if you go through a red light, take your pictures. Well, now they take pictures while you're sitting at the intersection. If your car is six inches over the yellow, uh, over the white line, you know, in the box, they'll give you a ticket for that. Yeah, this is uh, this is actually a uh, report that the ACLU of Illinois did on surveillance cameras in Chicago. It's really good. Okay, so the whole thing here is called reasonable expectation of privacy. Reasonable is probably the most litigated word in, in, in the English language, and the reason it is reasonable by nature is a subjective term. There's two parts to this test. One is an actual objective uh, expectation of privacy. In other words, you and, you know you go into a phone booth and you close the door and you hold your hand over the mouthpiece, if you, you have an expectation of privacy. The second piece is very subjective, and that is that society says that your expectation of privacy is reasonable. So it's sort of a loop, but you know, but both of these things are variables, right? We can change them. So you go into a phone booth, you close the door, you cover your, you know, you're speaking with a very low voice. Not only do you have a reasonable expectation of privacy, but people will generally say, yes, you do. What about you walking around in a public park? Do you have a reasonable expectation of privacy? No, not really. What about in your home? Well, yeah, in your home you do. What about when you put your trash out on the curb? Well, once you take it to the curb, you, you're basically saying, I'm ready for someone to pick it up. If you have no expectation of privacy. What about in a backpack? When something's in a container, generally you have a reasonable expectation of privacy. What about these clear backpacks that they make kids use at school? Now you can see why there's a lot of litigation about the Fourth Amendment. What about social media? Sharing information, putting all this stuff out there. I'm not saying you shouldn't share information, but think about the consequences of it. So here, I, I don't code, but here's my reasonable expectation of privacy. Both variables have to be true, okay? That's basically what I'm saying here. Here's your key takeaways. If you have an expectation of privacy and society finds that expectation to be reasonable, um, then you actually have a reasonable expectation of privacy. The Fourth Amendment applies. Um, if either variable is false, once you put something out there, once you put your once you put your trash out to the curb, you're saying I'm ready for someone to take it away. You've lost that expectation. Um, both variables, both are they are they're, they are variables. So we have to do something about it, right? How many people are flying out of here tomorrow or the next day or somewhere? You know, most people most people don't want to make a scene at the airport because you have to get home. You're either going on business, you're going on vacation. But you know, when I left uh, Las Vegas uh, the day, uh, Monday after that, um, I was I was the second person into the checkpoint, and the guy in front of me opted out. I opted out. The guy behind me opted out, and they were already getting frustrated. Like they just opened the gates. And the fourth guy opted out. And she started, she called for a supervisor. And then he acquiesced. Then he was like, you know what? I don't want to call to see you. And but think about it. I mean, there were reports that on set, there were there there were some anecdotal reports that on set on Sunday and Monday of DEF CON that 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 the TSA in Las Vegas had seen far more opt-outs than they had ever seen. Right? It doesn't require everyone to do it, but Think about, they say, they say on average 1% of people opt out. What if 10% did? I mean, think about the impact of that. If 1% of people do something, what's the expectation? Well, what about if 10% do it or 20%? So anyway, most of us are pretty good about this, most of the time. But sometimes we're not. I posted a picture of GPS data, I didn't even think about it. So most of us are pretty good about this. It's important for us to take responsibility educating other people. Because most of people out there don't care. Most of the people are in that ignorance category. They don't know. So it's our job to change that. Thank you very much.